As you might be able to tell from that accent, I'm in Switzerland, running the Swiss Alpine K47, a modest distance for this event. The longest race here is over 200 kilometers, but not modest for me. Apart from the 47 horizontal kilometers, two mountain passes lay ahead of us, reaching altitudes of over 2,500 meters above sea level and good for about 1,700 meters of ascent between them. The course started out relatively flat, still hilly enough to make it somewhat difficult to get in the rhythm, but on a race like this, a slow start is not an issue. About 15 kilometers in, I was feeling great, but things were about to get serious, as we were starting to climb out of the valley. I had promised myself not to look at the time before reaching the first pass, which I hoped to do in about two hours and a half. But on the foot of the ascent, I couldn't resist a glance at my watch. I was ever so slightly ahead of my estimates. But that wouldn't last, because soon after we climbed above 2000 meters, I stopped being able to breathe. I've run at similar altitudes before, so I knew I should have been able to handle the thinner air, and I refused to back off. I did slow down a fair bit, but kept pushing as hard as my lungs would allow or quite a bit harder, I'm afraid. By the time I got to the top, I was significantly behind schedule and my lungs were burning intensely. At the pass, I was overtaken by two friends who were somewhat surprised to see me again before the finish. This made me stop and think about the situation. I abandoned all hopes of running at a competitive time. Getting home in one piece was the new objective. On the descent of that first pass, I discovered that even without oxygen, I have decent downhill running skills. And I managed to recover a bit without losing too much ground. When I was approaching the aid station in the valley, someone was being evacuated from there by helicopter. My primary desire at that point was not to end up in the same position. There was no medical staff at the aid station, and I honestly don't know if they would have taken me out of the race if there had been. But now the decision was on me. After catching my breath for about 10 minutes, I was feeling too healthy to give up. It's okay to walk, I had said in my previous video. I decided to listen to myself. In the reasonably flat valley, I should have been going at speed if I wanted anything resembling a good time. But I had long given up on that and was now focusing on getting to the finish safely. So I didn't really care that I was being overtaken. As the climb towards the second pass started in earnest, I slowed down even more. I have a lot of respect for the slightly overweight guy in questionable gear, but the fact that he was in front of me was a confronting indication of my performance. Slowly the climb progressed, the views got more spectacular and the air got thinner. And when you can't walk, you crawl. I did probably manage to set one personal record, longest time spent running a single kilometer, almost 22 minutes. But going at a snail's pace kept my lungs from catching fire again. Disaster averted. Not today, you droning yellow dragonfly. At the aid station, on the second and last pass, there were runners in many different states. Some exhausted, getting seen to by the crew, some victorious, some just admiring the view. I, for one, was excited to get started. Because on the downhill, I could stop crawling and try to find some speed at last. All that was left for me to salvage from this race was to enjoy myself on the technical parts of the descent. 
Even here I needed to switch to walking a couple of times to catch my breath. But in between those breaks... My split time showed that I overtook about 30 people on a steep part of the descent. But it felt like hundreds. See those trees? That means there's air down here! I was still running breathing constraints, which is a bit ridiculous after almost 40 kilometers. At that point it should either be aching muscles or lack of energy slowing me down. But at least I was running. Well, on the flats and downhills I was. Luckily, there were no more serious climbs. As miserable as my personal experience was, the event itself was amazing. Not just the scenery was wonderful, but so were the people. By the time I arrived back in town, runners had been finishing there for hours. But the spectators were still applauding and cheering every single one of us. And between the energy of the crowd and the joy of surviving my ordeal, I couldn't resist a little sprint.